what to do if you find your girlfriend on Tinder and how to handle that situation. And you know, through this, we're gonna learn a little bit about female psychology, about frame control, about being a man that has standards and has values and how that you can keep those values in place so that you don't end up being someone who gets used and abused and gets taken advantage of. I'm John from BulldogMindset.com and on this channel I teach you how to have the Bulldog Mindset. I teach you how to be a man today. I teach you everything from building your financial wealth that you need to have as a man to building the physique, a manly physique that you want to have and attracting women and keeping them and managing your relationships. So I got this DM and it says, John, I don't know who else to ask to get the most balanced, realistic response, especially knowing the nature of women. A friend of mine saw my girlfriend who lives with me on Tinder. She was looking for female friends apparently, but she showed up to a guy. I believe she was looking for friends. She doesn't really have any, but we were in a fight. But we were in a fight, I think, when he saw her and she did admit it. I've since created an account to confirm the deletion, but dude, I don't know how to move forward. If you want to make a video on this, make this anonymous. And then he says, this was a week ago, keeping it brief. All right, and then he says, you know, not sure if you intend on answering this, but did want to add another detail. She has no other options for housing. She has a job, but will never make enough to leave, and she doesn't have friends to move in with. So even if I wanted to move on, I'm trapped unless I want to put her on the streets. I've read you should always leave people better than you found them, so I'm not sure I want to do that to her. He's got this girlfriend that lives with him, all right? She is on Tinder looking for girlfriends, but she showed up under one of his, his guy friends, saw her. He told, you know, told his friend about this, right? Or he was told about this from his friend. And so she was basically on Tinder. If she was just looking for female friends on Tinder, she's living with him, okay? This is a little bit different kind of a relationship. She could just tell him, hey, you know, I'm gonna create a Tinder profile looking for girlfriends, okay? Th you know, that that, Again, you know that that's somewhat questionable at least, but she's gonna know that that doing that is gonna be sort of a a red flag, right? She's gonna know that creating a Tinder profile at all and being on there is gonna be a red flag. So you know, if she comes out and tells him that she's doing it, that's that shows some honesty that that she's really authentically looking for girlfriends in there. Now, in reality, we know that's not the case. Okay, that's not what she's doing. All right, it's pretty obvious that she's she's wandering. She's looking for for guys. Maybe she's looking for a hookup on Tinder. Okay, and that's I think that's pretty clear. I'm pretty sure the person who DM'd me this. I'm pretty sure he knows this as well. When you're confronted with difficult realities, you must accept the reality. This is the first step here. You cannot deny the reality. You can't make excuses. You can't make justifications. Okay, you can't say why someone did something and all this stuff. Okay, you have to just accept the reality of the situation. This is the, the current reality. You should expect this kind of behavior. You should expect that girls are going to cheat on you. Okay, you should expect that people are going to betray you. You should not, and the reason why I'm saying this is because you should not put expectations on people. All right, you should expect that people are like NPCs. They're wandering around randomly, okay, and they're doing their program and they're gonna do whatever they're gonna do, all right? And when I say NPC, I mean non-player character. If you play video games or what I basically mean is like think of them as a robot, an automaton, okay? They're just running their program and they're doing what they're doing. They're not doing it purposely to hurt you, to offend you. They're not doing it because they're malicious towards you or they hate you. They're doing it because they're just idiots and they don't know any better, okay? Now again, this doesn't excuse people's behavior. It doesn't mean that you need to tolerate people's behavior. It just means that shit that people do should not piss you off, okay? Not deeply. I mean, you might be annoyed, you might be, but you do something about the situation. You don't brood, you don't bitch about it, you don't complain, you don't get all sad and upset because you should expect that people will do random shit. You can't control it, okay? And you should be accepting it. And when you do have a girlfriend, you do have a significant other in your life, you should expect that it is not forever, all right? That there's, there's a lot of things that could happen that they could cheat on you. They could leave you there. There's a lot of things, okay? You should be happy to have relationships in your life, but think of them as temporary. Now, if they last for a very long time, it's great. It's awesome, okay? 
and if they're be mutually beneficial, awesome. But you should be ready to let anything go at any moment in life. This is part of the Stoic philosophy. This is the mindset. This is being a man, all right, is, is being someone who's strong enough to not be absorbed in one person or to build your whole life around one person, to have your mission, your purpose and life be the number one thing. And if people are in your life, it's great. It's awesome. You have friends, you have girlfriends, you have relationships, you have girls that you're dating. Great. Awesome. Okay. But you cannot build everything around this foundation. Okay. It doesn't even mean that you can't get married if you want to. Again, there's a lot of reasons. I've done some videos talking about that. And I believe I, I agree with a lot of the MGTOW guys on the, the issue of marriage in modern day society, especially for men. But it doesn't even mean that. It just means that even if you do, went into marriage or long-term relationships, that you should still expect that there, that shit could go wrong. And it probably will go wrong at some point because that's that's the odds. And you should be willing to let even that that relationship go when it's when it's time when it, when it needs to okay so you should be prepared for those those things right you should be planning that that out so he went and he confronted her okay and he she admitted that she created this tinder profile and then he went and created a profile to ensure that hers was deleted i'm not sure exactly how that works i guess maybe he's flipping through to, to make sure that is what i would call mate guarding okay now here's the problem with this there, there's a few problems with this the, the biggest problem is that what he's done has makes him seem needy, okay? Because if, you know, if I'm a confident man that knows that I can attract women, that I have a lot to offer this world, okay, that I have high status, all right, that I'm a valuable person. If my girlfriend does something to me that, you know, that violates some of my standards, I don't have to, like, try and get her in line. I can just tell her to get the fuck out. I can tell her to leave and I can move on because I've got a lot of other options. You see what I'm saying? So what he did by doing that was he indicated that a, a sense of neediness, okay, which is a very big turnoff, all right? She's already, not only that, but he's made this thing taboo, okay? I don't like the idea of making things taboo. When you make things taboo for people, it makes them want it more, all right? If you want someone to desire something, tell them they can't have it then they're going to desire it. So by making this taboo, by saying, okay, you, this is wrong. You can't be on, on Tinder and I'm going to check on you and make sure that you're not on there. Now, like there's almost like a, there's almost like a thrill to doing it, to being there, to doing something that you could get caught. That's you're not supposed to be doing. Anytime that you try and control people by force, you create a sense of rebellion, right? If you were ever a teenager, okay, <laughs> most of us were, you know about rebellion, or if you have teenagers, you know about rebellion. And the thing that causes rebellion is control by force, right? When someone tries to control you, tries to tell you what you should do, you want to fight that shit. You don't want to do that, all right? And so he's creating this scenario where he's setting himself up for future failure, okay? Because now he's put himself in a lower position, okay, because he's having to chase her. He's having to guard her. Okay, he's having he's he's basically indicating that he doesn't have as high a value because he he doesn't have options that she's she's the one and he needs to make sure that she stays in line, and then he's also creating this taboo situation which is going to make it more tempting for her to to you know to want her outside the relationship. Okay, and then also on top of that, he, he's just creating a, a sense of of scarcity uh, that that it's not an abundance mindset, right? It, it's it's one of of of, of being afraid of, of what will happen, right? It's it's not the kind of, of guy that, that you want to be. I think one way to handle it is to keep that information uh, secret, right? I happen to know that she's on Tinder. Okay, so now I can observe and I can watch her behaviors and I can see what happens. The reason why I would do this is because I tend to be, this is how I make decisions a lot of times in life when they involve people, especially difficult ones, is that I don't like to get in the back and forth and argue with people and call them out on, on shit and, and then have them have a chance of redemption. What I mean by this, and there's a reason for this, right? What I mean by this is that if I'm going to fire you, okay, let's say you're not doing your job. Let's say you're working for me, right? And I've, I've done this several times, okay, with, with people that, that have worked for me. I am not going to reprimand you. And I am not going to go back and forth and tell you, you know, what you need to do or to point out things because you're just going to give me excuses. You're going to give me excuses 
okay? You're going to make up some bullshit, maybe convince me for the time being, or maybe you're going to be on your good behavior for the next week or two. I don't, I don't want to get into that dialogue. I don't want to get into these arguments. I don't want to, I just want to make my decision and then I'm just going to make my fucking decision. And there's a couple of reasons for that. One is because if I'm that kind of guy, all right, you know not to fuck with me because you can't talk your way out of it. Because if I've decided that you're gone, you're fucking gone. That's it. There's no arguing. I've already made the decision. When people know what you know, they behave differently. So even in this instance, right? Suppose that you you tell your girlfriend, yeah, I saw you on Tinder. Yeah, what, what the fuck, right? Now, she's going to hide that shit, right? She might still do it, but maybe she'll create another account, use a different phone or something, or she's going to just go out somewhere. She's going to hide that shit because now she's been caught. You haven't modified the behavior, right? The behavior would have changed if she didn't want to do it, right? Again, accepting reality, right? She did that because she wanted to do it. You haven't changed the desire for her to do what she wanted to do. You've only created a penalty. You've only you've only caught her, okay? If you want to change her mindset, you've got to make it, you've got to change that desire. I wouldn't give any kind of hint that I know this shit. And then I'd just kind of observe her. I'd watch her. I'd kind of watch what she's doing on her phone. I'd kind of watch just a little, again, I'm not advocating like being a, a spy and stalking. I'm just like, you're aware of this shit, right? You're aware that some shit has gone down. She's on Tinder, okay? So, so you're, you're thinking about it. You're like, okay, well, I, when you know she goes somewhere, I should kind of have an idea of, of where that is. Maybe I'll go and check to, just to see, right? Just to see. Because I, not because, again, this comes from a different place. It doesn't come from a place of being needy, of chasing, of trying to make guard. It comes from a place of, I want to find out what's going on. I want to find out this information, okay? So, so that I can make their appropriate action. Because here's the other thing, right? Maybe she is, maybe she is honestly innocent. And maybe she just made the Tinder profile and she's just really looking for girlfriends, okay? I wouldn't want to be like Othello, okay? If you haven't seen Othello, you need to get some fucking culture. But I, I wouldn't want to falsely accuse her, okay, when when she's innocent. I could destroy something that, that doesn't make sense. That's, again, right? You, but you can't determine that just by questioning a person because they're going to lie, all right? So you can't know, right? You're not an FBI agent. You're not, even then, you're not even going to be able to figure out whether they're lying or not. So I'd rather just observe and see what happens, okay? And have that information. I have the upper hand. When I have information that you don't have, I have the upper hand, okay? So I don't need to reveal. I don't need to tell someone that I've got that information. I've just got the information, okay? Then I'm going to observe. Then I'm going to see what happens, okay? And then on my check, right? Again, like I said, it's not coming from a needy or desperate place or type of mate guarding type of place, but I might just check. Let's see. Okay. Going somewhere at six o'clock. All right. Let's see if you're there. All right. And see what's going on. And if I get enough evidence that indicates to me that, uh, this is, is, is going down how I suspect it might be going down, then I'm just going to cut it. I'm just going to be like, Hey, you know what? We're done. And she's going to say, why are we done? I'm saying, it's not that important, but I think you know why. It's cool, though, right? And then I'm going to say, grab your shit, get the fuck out. That's it. <laughs> That's it. It's done, right? She's arguing, oh, right? Now now she's confessing shit. Now she's saying, oh, is it because of this? Is because she's confessing all of these fucking sins, maybe, <laughs> okay? So now you're hearing what the actual truth is. That's the only time you're actually going to get the actual truth, okay? But maybe she doesn't. Maybe she just knows, okay? You're, you're going to be able to tell a lot by that reaction, all right? And you've already made your decision at that point, okay? So that's why I would react in that way. I'm not losing any value, okay? I'm not, I'm not tipping my hand. I'm not getting in a situation where someone could give me lies, okay? Because I'm observing myself. I'm keeping the information myself. And then when I've made the decision, I've made the decision, and it's final. It's done, and I'm not going to get into ridiculous arguments and back and forth and fights and throwing plates and all this shit because I've already made the decision. I'm a man. I, when I make a decision, I made a fucking decision and I'm sticking with the decision. How can you argue with someone who doesn't give a fuck what you have to say? You can't. They've already made their decision. And when if you're known to be a person like that, people will not fuck with you because they know that if they cross you and you, and you have determined that they're guilty, it's done. It's over. You, you, there's no coming back from that place. You, you are fucked, right? And that's, that's key, guys. Especially, you know, you don't want to get into this fucking drama, right? You don't want to get into this back and forth, this drama and bullshit. And, you know, people get clever when they get backed into a corner. 
you accuse someone of some shit, okay, and you don't have enough evidence, they're going to lie to you. They're going to tell you what you want to hear. They're going to tell you, oh, I'm sorry, all this bullshit, all this kind of stuff, and they're going to do the same shit behind your back, all right? They're, they're not really sorry. They, people do the actions that they intend to do. They don't accidentally do shit, all right? So if you haven't done something that changes their intentions, you should expect their intentions are the same. Adding a penalty, catching someone, punishing them does not change their intentions okay it only it only changed their behavior it's like a dog right and that's what happens when you punish people that's what happens when you get into confrontations when you have when you accuse people of shit okay when you give them the information that you know what's up uh, that's what they do is they just fucking hide the shit they bury it so that's why i don't give that information i don't volunteer that information if i have that information i'd rather keep the information i'd rather see how the person does see what's going on okay same thing people that are working for me same thing you're doing some something wrong Sometimes I'm not going to tell you. I mean, sometimes if I think something can be corrected and, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying that all the time, but a lot of times I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to see what you do. I'm just going to point out mistakes that you make and then, you know, you're going to have those chances. Like, I want to see you actually take, I want you to take ownership. I want you to say, oh, I'm fucking up right now. I better fuck the, fucking fix this shit, okay? And to see the, the writing on the wall rather than, than, than me having to indicate it and then you're going to lie and bullshit. There's, there's a second way of dealing with the situation. The second way that of dealing with the situation would be just a direct confrontation, okay? This shit happened. It's unacceptable to you, so you just tell her, get the fuck out, right? So you, you, you don't, again, it's very important that you're very precise about this, right? So you say, okay, look, I, I, I saw your, that you have your profile on, on Tinder, so I, I understand what that means. So it looks like, you know, this is, this is what that means, right? You, I, I know, and you know what that means, all right? And then you just leave it at that, okay? Let her be a little bit scared. Let her, like, you know, be afraid of this. Or you can just say, like, yeah, that's it. That's it. You're toast. Gone. Get the fuck out, right? You don't have an argument. I don't really like that approach, okay? I know that that's, a, you know, a, 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 a good, strong approach, okay? It's better than, than, than what, uh, what he did here, okay? But I don't like that approach, again, because... You could be Othello there. There could be some innocence in there. Like, I mean, I think the percentage chance that she's innocent here is like 5%. Or maybe she just made a bad judgment call and she wasn't actually going to act on it. Right, again, the, there, there's reasons why I would not take that necessarily approach. If you really want to stay in this relationship with that girl, then you could take that approach and you could just be like, you know, I know what this means. And, you know, in basically indicating that hey it's open field like i can i can go and do whatever the fuck i want to and she's gonna get scared she's gonna apologize right all that all that shit but again i don't know if you can believe that shit that's why i wouldn't take that approach but it's a better approach still i i would take like i said the first approach that i said the second thing he said is that like you know she lives there with him she doesn't have a job or doesn't have a good job she can't afford a place of her own right so it'd be basically kicking around the street and john don't you always say leave people better than when you found them true but not when they fuck you now, when they fuck you over, okay, so if you're unhappy in this situation, okay, if you're unhappy in this relationship, and I got one more thing I, I'm gonna, I just remembered I need to talk about at the end of this, so <laughs> one more thing, it just keeps on piling up, but, uh, you know, I'm not advocating that you just, just, okay, people are responsible for their own actions, all right, so if you're paying for the fucking place, okay, and she's staying with you, and it's your place, all right, and she can't afford some other place. I mean, you could give her the courtesy. You could be like, look, we're done. You got two weeks to get the fuck out of here. Right? I think that's, that's, I think that's like a reasonable thing rather than saying you're just out of here, especially given the severity of what she's done. Like, you're just breaking up with her essentially, right? Now, if you caught her cheating on you, all right, now it's like, yeah, get your shit out now, right? Like, you don't have any time. I don't give a fuck. Oh, I don't know. I'm going to be on the street. I don't have any friends. Well, fuck you. Like, you should have uh, thought about that. There's a fucking spider coming for me right now. <laughs> a big-ass spider is, like, just coming for me. My point is is that, like, a person... You cannot be responsible for a person's consequences, right? You cannot just protect people from the consequences of their actions. If she has set herself up in the situation... She's moved in with you. She's dependent on you. And then she's fucked you over. Well, that's her fucking problem, all right? I would not be sympathetic in this situation. I'd be empathetic in, in meaning that, like, I, I understand this is probably going to be a difficult situation for you, but I'm still going to do what I'm going to fucking do. Leaving people better when you f than when you found them is, is a really important thing to do. And 
I would argue that in this situation, you are doing that because you're making her take responsibility for her fucking actions. All right. You know, it's, it's not your responsibility to take care of everyone. Again, now you have done something. You have invited her to live with you. Okay. And by, by doing that, you know, you've, you've taken some, I believe that you at least should, you know, should, should do this in, in a, in a smart way. You should never do things out of obligation. Okay, that's that's the key thing that I want to say here is that you shouldn't be staying with her. You shouldn't be keeping her in your house out of obligation because you feel bad. I'm going to kill that fucker. I'm going to kill it before it, before it hides somewhere. There's a reason why you got into this situation. Okay, now this is the hard truth. Okay, why is she on Tinder? Probably because you weren't being a man in the relation. Now, again, don't get me wrong. Women could do whatever they want. Hypergamy is true. People will cheat. They'll do random shit. But there's a lot of focus, right? I see it in YouTube. I see it in books and, and whatnot. And on guys learning how to attract women, okay? On pickup and they're, they're all this stuff. And I talk about this stuff for sure. But there's not enough focus on actually being a man in the relationship, right? I talk about this book all the time because I think it's the best one. It's David Data's book, The Way of the Superior Man. You should read that book. You should read that book multiple times. You should get the audio version of the book. You should listen to it multiple times, okay? You should drill that shit into your head because I feel like that's the only book that's really talking about this, right? Some of the videos I've done on this channel talk about this, but I'm not necessarily blaming you, right? I can't blame you for someone else's actions, but I am saying that you, a lot of times, the problems that guys have with women in relationships, especially with them straying and things like that, have more to do with them not being a man in the relationship and not understanding that dynamic between the masculine and the feminine. They're not being very masculine. So the woman is looking for a more masculine guy. She's looking to find that masculinity somewhere else, right? So rather than go on a whole diatribe and try to tell you what's in that book, go ahead and read The Way of the Superior Man. And I'll just say that understand that that could be a lot of the problem. That's kind of the root cause of the of the problem. Again, it might not be in this case, but most of the time you should assume that, that, that the problem is something that you're doing or not doing, right? That she would have this desire to go and look elsewhere, that she would get on Tinder and whatnot. That's all I got for this video. Make sure if you haven't taken the bulldog quiz to figure out how much of a bulldog you are, go check that out. Go take the quiz. Uh, there'll be a link in the in the card here and then also in the description below and I'll talk to you next time. Take care.